I want to show you guys how I like to set up my game over screens. So right now I have this game, right? I got my player and I have this scarecrow enemy. And if I collide with them, you'll see I start taking damage. So if I actually go all the way down to zero, well, right now I'm just printing this console log saying you're dead. But I'd like to actually show how I make a game over menu. And it's worth noting, there's so many different ways of doing this, and there's so many different games that, you know, you have a lose condition in. Like in my case, you collide with the Scarecrow, you lose health. When your health's zero, you lose. But in something like Doodle Jump, you lose when you miss a platform and you fall off the screen, right? So it really doesn't matter. The solution I'm gonna show today is applicable to any game you're making. You're just gonna have to adapt it to what you're doing, but it won't be hard. Okay, so let me give you just a little bit of context in my scene so you understand how I'm gonna set things up. And really the main thing you need to know is the Scarecrow, right, has this script called Damage on Collision. And I'm, for the demo, just seeing if we're colliding with a player and getting their player health script and telling them to take 25 damage. Simple. So the only thing the enemy does is damage for 25 a hit. Okay, and this is my player health script and we can go through this really quick. We have a health and a max health. At start, we set health to max health. All right, so it's just, I don't want to reset it manually. It'll do it for me when I restart the game. And then I just have that take damage function. So, you know, we were passing in 25 in the enemy script. And we basically say health minus equals amount. So in this case, it'd be 25. And if we're ever less than or equal to zero, then we set our health to zero just so we cap it off. And then we're right now we're just doing that debug log, you're dead. But really, instead of logging, you're dead, we'd really like to display our game over screen. And again, so there's so many different ways to go about this, but I'm gonna be using events and follow pretty much the observer pattern for doing this because it gives you a lot of decoupling and flexibility so that whatever your game requires, you're gonna be able to handle it. And so I'm gonna actually make an event called on player death. And I'm gonna make this at the top of my player health script, but it doesn't have to be. You could make this event in any script you want that fits your game, like a game manager or whatever. So adapt it to what you need. Anyway, at the top, I'm gonna to say public static event. And then for the delegate that we want this event to respond to, or the methods that we want to respond to this event, I'm gonna be using C Sharp's action delegate. And by default, you're not gonna be able to reference it, it's gonna complain, because you need to import at the top of the script using system. And there you go, see how it works now? And so this action delegate basically just returns void and doesn't take parameters or any arguments. If this is completely lost to you, I talk about it in my observer pattern video and you should also just watch a video on events and delegates quick. Anyway, I'm gonna call this on player death. And then the only thing we need to do in this script is after our health gets set to zero and we're dead, we just wanna say on player death question mark so we know it's not null dot invoke. Again, this is just standard way of creating an event and firing it. So I'm not gonna cover how to do that here. I'm just gonna show you how to make a game over screen. And because this is a public static event, we're gonna be able to reference this on other scripts. This is a public event that we are globally exposing for other game objects to subscribe to, which is what we're gonna do for things like player movement so we can stop moving and also for our game over screen to display itself. Speaking of a game over screen, let's actually create one really quick. I have this canvas object, which is, you know, the root of all UI in Unity. And so I'm gonna right click on this canvas and go to UI and create a panel and call this menu background. If you don't have a canvas, by the way, you can just right click anywhere in your hierarchy and go to UI panel, it'll automatically make this canvas for you. And then on your canvas in the inspector, I like to set the canvas scaler to scale with screen size. And I tend to just do 1920 by 1080 for HD. Just a little tip, you can put in any resolution you want here or even make it configurable in some options menu. But that's not the point of this. All right, so we have this menu background here on our canvas and I'm just gonna make the color darker because by default it's white uh, and a little bit transparent. So I'm just gonna make it dark. I'm gonna right click on our canvas again and go to UI, button, text mesh pro. Text mesh pro has a higher quality text on it. You can use the regular button. It just kind of looks crappy. And I'm gonna call this a retry button. One last thing I'll do is go to UI text text mesh pro and I'll call this game over text and I'll literally say game over. I'll center the alignment. And then with the rec tool selected, I'm gonna hold shift so it keeps its resolution. I'm gonna just expand it bigger and make it auto size on the inspector. 
Okay, and then I'm just gonna position it somewhere at the top. It doesn't really matter what I'm doing here. Like I'm just trying to make some style, but making it look good is really the fun part for you. I'm more showing you how it's gonna function. Okay, same with this button. I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger and position it here. And then I can expand this retry button, go to text and put the text here as something like retry. And I'll auto size that as well. Okay, cool. So now we have this background, this retry button and this game over text. So I can actually shift click these three or just select all three of them, right click and go to create empty parent. And then we can just call this game over menu. So under the canvas, we have a game over menu and under the game over menu, we have the three things we just made. And what's interesting, right, is if I click on our game over menu parent object, we can then disable it and re-enable it. And you'll see this is turning on and off our game over menu, which is what we want to do when that event gets fired, right? And so I'm actually gonna make a new script in this assets folder. I'm gonna right click, go to create C sharp script. And I'll call this something, I don't know, like UI manager, something like that. And let's attach that to our canvas. So click and drag it onto our canvas and open it up. We can get rid of start and update. And in this UI manager, the only thing I really wanna demonstrate is how to enable that game over menu object we just set up in our UI, right? On our canvas. So I'll actually make a direct reference to that. I'll say public game object, and I'll call this game over menu. I'm gonna make a new function. And again, because our event is an action, it has to have a void return type and not take arguments. So I'm gonna say public void, enable game over menu. And in here, all we wanna do is say game over menu dot set active to true. So we have a way to turn our game over menu on by default in our scene, our game over menu is gonna be set to disabled, right? Cause we don't want it to show when you start the scene, you want it to already be disabled. And you could also do this through script somewhere else. But for my case, I'm just gonna have it, you know, disabled. So we want to subscribe to this event. We have this on player death. And so we know it's a static event on our player health class. And in Unity conventions, we always subscribe and unsubscribe for events in our on enable and on disable methods. So I can simply say void on enable and say player health dot on player death. That's our event. And then plus equals enable game over menu. And then additionally, we can say void on disable player health dot on player death minus equals. So we're unsubscribing enable game over menu. And this is just what you have to do for events to safely, you know, get things subscribed to the event. Okay, so when we call on player death invoke, we will actually call our enable game over menu and not just our enable game over menu, anything we want to subscribe to this event in the exact same way. But let's test this. Let's see if our menu actually is working. First, I'll make sure that our game over menu is inserted into our UI manager variable. And then check this out. We are getting damaged, we're getting damaged, and we're dead. But now we have our game over menu showing up. And I can even click on this retry. But you notice I can actually move around still, which is probably not what you want, especially if you're like in a dead animation or something like that, right? So I'll show you how you can just also subscribe another component to this. On my player game object, you know, I have like a rigid body, a circle collider, an animator, but really what I care about is this player controller script. And I'm moving with a rigid body. And so right now my rigid body is set to dynamic, but if it was set to static, right, and I run the game, then I can't really move anymore. So if I wanted to stop my player from moving, there's a lot of ways I could go about this and it's really specific to the game you're making. But in my case, what I wanna do is I'm gonna make a new method. So I'll say private void, Disable player movement. And again, it's gonna be void with no arguments because that's an action. And in here, what I can say is animator.enabled equals false. How I'm gonna handle disabling my player movement is by turning my rigid body to static. So I can say rigidbody.body type is equal to rigidbody type 2D dot static. So this will basically disable my animator and then turn my rigid body into static. So I'm not gonna be able to move and it's not gonna animate when I do my inputs. But we also would like this every time we start the game to you know turn these back on and make sure that they're on. So we can just copy paste this method and do the exact same thing, except we'll call this enable player move. And I'll set the rigid body type 2D to dynamic. 
and then we'll actually call enable player movement. I can call it in start. Okay, so we're always gonna be enabling our movement on start. And then again, we wanna have on enable and on disable to subscribe to that event. So I could say void on enable, say player health dot on player death plus equals disable player movement. Then void on disable player health dot on player death minus equals disable player movement. So pretty much any script you want. Let's say you had audio play when your player died and you had an audio manager, you could subscribe in an audio manager like this. If you had, I don't know, some sort of achievement system or some sort of tracking on how many times you've died on your level, you know, you could have that system subscribe to this. There's so many things that probably are gonna be interested in this on player death. And you're just gonna do this in any of the components you have, right? And with that in place, when I now attack I can no longer, you know, I'm pressing WASD. I don't know if you hear my keyboard, but I'm not animating or moving anymore. It says game over, so good. So that's it for our event. I'm not gonna show you anymore on how to do the event stuff, but how do we actually get this retry button to do something? Well, in our retry button, at the bottom, we have this Unity event that comes with the Unity button, and we can add to this, and you'll see that we actually have this slot to put in a game object. And until we do, we can't access this function dropdown. Just for convenience, since I already have this UI manager script, I'm gonna make a method in here where we can reload our current level. So I can say public void restart level, right? And then we need to import our unity engine.scene management library so that we can, you know, reload our scene. So I can at the top say using unity engine.scene management. And now what I can say is scene manager dot load scene. And now we need to pass in like an integer for our scene build index. Alternatively, we could put in like the string of our level, like level one or sample scene, whatever it is. What I'd like to do is pass in the current level, right? So I could say scene manager dot get active scene. So we're getting the active scene, the current scene that we're on right now. And I'll say dot build index. So we're gonna pass in you know, the build index of this current scene, which is one of the parameters it takes. And additionally, if you could also make another method here called like, you know, like go to main menu or something like that. And in our load scene, you load the main menu index, which is probably zero, or maybe you have it called main menu, like a scene like that. Um, I don't have a main menu, and I think you guys can kind of figure that out. I just showed you how to do it. If you go to file build settings, this is where your build index is. So right now I only have this sample scene. It has index of zero and it's called sample scene. So that would be the string example and zero would be the build index. But I could have a main menu scene I created and put in this build index and then use that. Going back to this retry button, we just made that function, right? So I can actually click and drag our canvas into here because that's where our UI manager lives. You'll see that this function dropdown now is enabled, so we can click on it, and you'll see a whole bunch of stuff here that's attached to the canvas, all like the components, including our UI manager that we attached to it. And on this UI manager script, we have restart level because we made it public, we see it here. So we'll click that, we can now play the game, and you'll see I can now take damage from the scarecrow. It's game over, I can't move. If I select retry, well, it reloads the level, and because we put you know, that enable player movement stuff in the start method, then I can move around again. So this is working perfectly. And I know there's still a lot of improvements that could be made here, but the key thing I really wanted to show in this tutorial is wherever you're doing this trigger for your on player death, right? You can basically just have an event that is globally accessible and then have everything that cares about your player dying have a response to that event and then it's nice and decoupled. You don't have to be passing in your game over objects, you know, to your player objects and your game managers and stuff like that. It kind of gets messier that way. So this is a pretty clean way of going about it. And it's not that bad. It wasn't that much code. You know, I had to make like a new script and stuff, but you probably already have something like this in your game. If not, once you have it up, like that overhead's done and you could just keep adding to it. It's a good way to go about it. Like the video if it helped you out. And there's one more thing I wanna show you quick, is if you actually collide with my scarecrow again, well, then it tells you to subscribe. So click subscribe.